So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this, uh, this info session for McGill University's mini MBA series. Uh, my name is Eric Sain. I'm the I'm a director here at the McGill Executive Institute, which is our hub at uh, McGill University for lifelong learning of managers and executives. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you. I see we have people joining from around Canada. Uh, this session is going to be you'll although you'll be on mute, we want it to be interactive and feel free to use our chat function and ask questions along the way. I'm joined by my colleague Giovanna, who is our moderator this afternoon, and she'll be uh, monitoring for chat questions, et cetera. So uh, and she'll just uh, interrupt me along the way if uh, if questions come up. Also, there will be time at the end to answer more questions. So uh, uh, again, this should last about 40 minutes. Uh, my goal is just to make sure I answer your questions about this series. It's really set out to help people grow and add value in their organization by learning uh, key concepts, ideas, benchmarks, etc., that are taught in leading MBA programs. So the agenda today is going to be, um, stop, sorry, here. Here's the agenda. So the agenda today is going to be just a quick introduction then a history and overview, um, a little bit about the benefits and key learning themes, the getting into more detail about the series, which includes two potential cycles or parts, part one and part two, who's it for, and again, questions and answers at the end. Just to get things started though, I'd be very interested to hear from you why you're considering a mini MBA because uh, I want to make sure I tailor this uh, presentation to your needs. If you have a chance to, to put a few words in the chat function, why you're interested in taking this uh, or why you're considering a mini MBA at this point. Uh, some people it's for, uh, they're, they're looking to grow in their career. They might be uh, changing jobs, et cetera. But anything you might be able to say along the lines of uh, why you're considering it, and then Giovanna can maybe read off some of the answers. So we have transition from a career in education to the business world, career growth, building business, growth, keeping up to, the, to date with trends, promotion and possibilities for career change. Very good. Very good. It sounds like, uh, so we've got a couple of things that's been mentioned there. Um, the idea of being able to level up and get ready for promotions. That's probably one of the bigger things we're, we're hearing as an interest to look at this type of program. You know, what got the, the old saying, what got you here today might not be the future ready competencies and confidence you need to go for the next steps. So um, indeed, uh, helping you be ready for that next promotion. Um, some people are, and you, some people talked about business acumen. Indeed, that's going to be a major part of this program, looking at kind of the overall view of business, but also of management. So the, the management practice and business across the organization, so that even if you are staying in a functional area, maybe you're, you know, you're going to stay as a a sales person or in finance or operations or engineering. But as you grow in the organization, your decisions are going to have a ripple effect on other areas of the business. So learning about all these areas of the business is, is certainly going to be helpful. And when we talk to HR directors, a lot of them are saying, we're looking for people that have had some type of academic experience that has a holistic view of the organization. Um, they have better empathy for what's going on maybe in another division, and they have better decisions because they're thinking of all the, you know, all the uh, ripple effect that they can have when they do make decisions and prob solve problems. So very good, well, thank you for that. And we'll come back to this uh, a little bit later in terms of uh, maybe some interests you have. And again, 
in this session. If I don't answer all your questions, we'll get to that at the end as well. So one thing I do want to start with is the fact that this may or may not be the right solution for you. Uh, we would love to welcome you to a mini MBA, but we know that you have many, many choices. Um, one of those choices, for example, is say an EMBA, which is a degree program, much longer in length. So usually a typical executive MBA is over a year in length, quite a bit more expensive in terms of the, uh, the financial commitment, but it is a degree program. And so many people are looking at a decision between a degree or a shorter compact mini MBA, for example. Um, others, you know, you have maybe a, a specialty MBA or a specialty graduate program. So instead of an MBA, Master's in Business Administration, they might want to do a deep dive into a Master's of Analytics or a Master's of Retail Management or a Master's of financial acumen. There's there's many different specialty uh, master's programs out there as well. And finally, simple corporate training programs that you might have within your company. Um, what we are happy to see is that a lot of companies, even with internal training programs, are still sending many managers to the mini MBA because they want them to meet and work with and understand what's going on in other sectors and other companies. So you'll be, you'll have a great peer group uh, that you know, you'll expand your network by getting to know people from other industries. So one of those issues is, would you like a degree or not? The mini MBA is not a degree program. Now for a lot of companies and organizations, they're not necessarily interested in somebody having a degree but they want to have academic recency and make sure that this is a program that's going to give them future ready skills, not necessarily a degree. Others, I talked to somebody who was working at a bank and said, for me to get beyond the director level, I need to have a degree. So that would be a reason to maybe not take the mini MBA and look and take it a degree program. But for others, let's jump into this program in particular. First of all, it's the longest running program of its kind in Canada. It actually started in 1949. And of course it's uh, improved and updated along the way, but it's a longstanding program that we're very proud of here at McGill. And the philosophy is, is we don't want MBA knowledge to be exclusive and you need to have, for example, an undergraduate business degree to get into an MBA. We want MBA knowledge to be open to all. Um, we have dentists, architects, fashion designers, uh, as well as people from the corporate and, and not-for-profit sectors in typical functions, uh, HR, finance, accounting, or uh, say operations, engineering. It should be open to all, and that's our philosophy behind the program. It's a flexible program as well. People ask, well, what's the difference between this and say maybe a program that I, I see at an institution in Toronto or whatever? Um, this is a flexible pathway. You could just take the mini MBA executive development course. It's a 10 day program. You could stop there. Uh, you're gonna get great MBA learning and uh, you'll get a certificate of completion at the end. But for those who wanna go on, We've also added a second cycle called the Mini MBA Advanced Management Course, which offers another 10 days. As you can imagine, there's so much management learning that we could, we could extend to you that even a 20-day program wouldn't necessarily be enough, but there is that option. And if you do complete cycle one and cycle two, not only do you get a certificate of completion for each of the cycles, but you'll get a third mini or mini MBA series certificate for completing both cycle one and cycle two. I want to emphasize though that there's no obligation to take both. You could take one and stop there. I should mention that for some who have taken the mini MBA series for many or over many years, uh, because there's no set deadline, you have to finish it in a certain time period. For those before really uh, and up to about last year, we had a third cycle called the Integrated Management Thinking course. 
And for many of those people that wanted to continue and take that, we're offering that this spring. So don't be surprised if you see a third cycle. Um, that's for those who wish to complete, as I say, it was a, an extra uh, component of the series that we had uh, in the past. But now we're down to two cycles in order to complete the series. So what's in it for you? I mentioned future ready, really making sure that you're downloading the latest 2.0 version of management and business acumen. Um, looking at uh, business management, social endeavors. Again, this is very much for not-for-profit and government services, as well as corporations. And deliver just-in-time benchmarks, because even if you've uh, you know, even had some recent academic experiences, the average person changes jobs at least 12 times during his or her career. And you might need late-breaking knowledge to be up to speed for your, for your new job. So best practices and strategies, really it's about change, making sure that you're ready and you're feeling confident and competent to deal with today's changes, whether externally, outside your organization or in the organization. Giving you new perspectives, global perspectives, benchmarks that you might not have thought about. So maybe even if you're say a financial expert, Hopefully, we're going to bring you something new and a new perspective and insight in that area. Uh, you might be a specialist in sales. Our goal is to bring you new perspectives and insights there. So everybody's coming to this program with some expertise, and we want to enlarge in there, them, get them out of their comfort zone for the other areas of management. So you'll be having a lot of pragmatic tools and frameworks. We don't want this to be a stuffy 101 theory type of course. And then, you know, why does it matter? Uh, I think a lot of people do like to showcase it on their LinkedIn profile or on their CV. Um, they'll mention McGill University and, and show the, the mini MBA. And, you know, we have a lot of HR managers who say, I want our people to have some type of MBA knowledge, whether it's a full degree or a mini MBA. Um, so the, it's, to them, it adds value to have a mini MBA experience um, in your background. You are also going to, I talked about this, this network of peers. You'll get to meet people from very diverse functions in the company, but also diver diverse sectors. So it might be Cirque du Soleil and Bombardier. It might be small startup organizations. It might be uh, a Canadian government service you're going to have a, a wide range of industries and success stories to share with others. And then really it's confidence and competence to go forward and uh, continue to grow and add value. So if I look at the mini MBA overall, these are some of the key themes that we address. Obviously the people side is critical more so now and post COVID if you will, than ever before, but managing others, but also yourself. You will learn uh, similar to what you find in an EMBA and MBA. There'll be you know, some project work and things where you'll get to understand about your own strengths, your own, how you say, uh, make decisions, prioritize, et cetera. So you'll be learning about yourself as well as others. Strategic planning, uh, negotiating both personally and for your organization, things around sustainability as an innovation strategy, um, understanding business numbers. Many people call me and say, I hope I'm not the weak link here, but I really have not had a financial background in my work experience or even my academic experience. Is this course going to be right for me? And the answer is yes. You know, it's up to us to bring you a comfortable learning journey so that you do get up to speed on interpreting a basic financial statement, understanding more about budgeting, and you know, not having, I'll even say the word fear of numbers as some people do. So uh, it's, it's okay if you don't have a, a business background or certainly a financial background to take the course. Uh, things around operational efficiency and supply chain, now, you might think that this is just reserved for manufacturing, but really it's any organization that has processes. 
And finding out where the bottlenecks are, where there are, you know, uh, say blockages and things getting done effectively and trying to overcome that. Uh, marketing and business development. Again, even if you're a government service, uh, you have stakeholders, people using your services and how to gain, how to increase awareness of what you have to offer. So whether you're in a corporation or a not-for-profit, understanding marketing and business development is, is important. And customer service, as well as innovation and entrepreneurship. You'll have a chance even to uh, roll up your sleeves and can run a fictitious company along the way. Another thing people ask about, how are you different to other mini MBAs or essentials of, of MBAs that are out there? We base a lot of our uh, content around what we call the five mindsets. And this is quite simply, uh, Henry Mintzberg, a professor here at McGill, observed managers and executives, uh, did a lot of research about that. And he noticed a certain number of mindsets that people had to, uh, that people needed to succeed in the, in the business world. And for mindsets, for him, it was perspectives. How do you view things? Focus, where you spend your energy and time. Thinking, how do you structure ideas and habits? Um, so starting with the reflective mindset, in order to lead others, you better know a bit more about yourself. So we'll, we will be spending time um, helping you get to be more familiar with your own strengths and also be reflective before you act. Uh, next, the analytical mindset. Uh, this is typical of what people think of an MBA, being able to take information that you get an overload of information every day and how can you structure it in a way where it makes sense? So giving you business models like a business model canvas, giving you frameworks to understand financial numbers, giving you a way to understand what your competition is doing, these are all frameworks and a way to analyze data to make it easier for you to do your job. And that's certainly an important mindset to have. Next, of course, the collaborative mindset, uh, working with others and through others to get things done. We'll be exploring this, and this is an important one. The worldly mindset. Now, this is talking about having benchmarks and insights beyond your insular sector understanding. So having a, a, a open understanding in that sense, but it's also worldly in the way of moving beyond your comfort zone. Get, you know, so if you're a specialist in sales, but say uh, processes and uh, supply chain management has not been your thing, you'll have a chance to be exposed to that and maybe move out of your comfort zone and go into that. Or maybe you're somebody who's uh, strong in HR, but not so much in numbers, that's where you can flex and go into that area of, of the business. And we have projects and exercises for you to do that. And then finally, it's great to put all these tools in your toolkit, but you need to have action behind it. So the action mindset is actually getting things done. Uh, it's also called the catalytic mindset. So when we put it all together, we always try to make sure that we are giving you a holistic type of experience so that you're learning about yourself, you're learning about business models, leader and manager styles, global trends, putting things into, into action. This is the idea behind this series. And I think it makes sure that you're not walking away with just one, you know, one aspect or functional area that you remember but a well-rounded person coming out of this program. When are the programs coming up? So the cycle one, which is what most people start with, uh, which is the executive development course, that comes up on April 20th, and that will be online, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., so Thursdays and Fridays. We also have... Uh, uh, one that for those who would prefer to go to Montreal and have this in person, sorry, in Toronto, uh, there's a Toronto version of this program is starting April 24th. 
And that's actually going to be in Mississauga, quite specifically. It's going to be uh, not far from the airport. Um, so for those who want an in-person experience or an online experience, you have two choices coming up in April. Otherwise, throughout the year, we always try to offer four or five different opportunities to take it either online or in person. We also, starting next spring, have uh, Ottawa, uh, an on-site Ottawa program for the executive development course. For those who complete the executive development course and want to go on, uh, the next cycle of the advanced management course is starting September 11th, uh, and that's going to be online. We'll also have an in-person program in October. And then finally, as, as I said, I don't want to confuse people, but we do have a third cycle that we're um, that are, we're still making available to people who had started the series earlier, and that is the integrated management thinking course that starts April twenty fourth, and that's in person in Montreal. So just again a quick resume here. Um, these are your options coming up for the executive development course. And all of this, of course, is to, on our website, and you can call us as well if you'd like for more information. So what's covered in the executive development course? I talked about the overarching philosophy and the, you know, the themes in the mini MBA series, but specifically within EDC, we'll be looking at negotiation, uh, sustainability strategies, sales and customer service. And I, I, I remind people that sales may be not in the sense of um, you know, you know, advertising and selling things that might not apply to a non-for-profit organization, but even just understanding the metrics you use to see if you're meeting your stakeholder needs. So we come at it from that angle as well. Accounting essentials. So accounting to be able to make business decisions. We're not going to make an accountant out of you, but we want you to be more comfortable with numbers so that when numbers come up in a business decision, you can make those decisions. Strategic analysis, so um, understanding competitive analysis, uh, strategic decision making, et cetera. And then, of course, people and collaboration, things around emotional intelligence, team collaboration, conflict resolution, and, and overall leadership and culture, among others. So a lot to cover. Uh, it, it goes fast. And in the, the architecture of the program, you know, you might start out and we'll, we'll work on people and culture. And then the next session might be accounting and finance. The next might be uh, sustainability. We mix it up and, uh, and also have opportunities to learn and do at the same time. So uh, there might be, a, uh, in fact, I think I've got a, an example of what that might look, look like. For example, uh, something you might start with um, some pre-readings or maybe even a video to watch and then come into class. And, um, and, and again, have, we weave different types of topics throughout the journey that you have with us. There will be some presenting by the, the professor, some opportunities to share your own stories, and then various exercises to put ideas into action. The advanced management course, as I say, this is coming up in September and October, uh, and then it'll also be offered next spring in Toronto. This is a course that continues with some of the themes that are in the first cycle, A to EDC, but looking at connecting with customers, customer experience management, uh, uh, AI essentials, advanced presenting skills, things like that. Um, strategic management, uh, strategic growth, and uh, the trade-off between going quickly to market or uh, having, a, having a longer uh, development process, et cetera. More on financial management, operational excellence, which gets into this idea of, of optimizing your processes, and marketing excellence, uh, whether it's branding strategies, digital marketing, there's so much that has changed in that area. Finally, managing the whole firm. And in this 
each both of these cycles have learning by doing exercises. There's a project in EDC where you'll be evaluating a company and trying to make suggestions to improve that company. In this program, you'll actually be in a business simulation where it's as though you're the general manager in a company and uh, you've come in to run it with your team and get to make decisions along the way that affect people, affect products, uh, your, your, uh, your finances, your uh, operations, et cetera. So it just has, it's a, an opportunity to, uh, you know, get your feet wet in running a company as a general manager without the risk of doing this in the real world. Some people ask just because of the timing, for whatever reason, they might ask if they could take AMC before EDC. Uh, the answer is yes. We ask that you have 10 or more years of business experience or work experience to do that. Um, and that you are at that point comfortable with reading a basic financial statement and uh, you have strategic responsibilities in your organization. But if that's the if that's the case, then yes, you can jump into AMC directly. Again, just to remind people, for those who wish, there is a third cycle of the mini MBA called integrated management thinking. And this is what will be covered starting April 24th. This is basically saying you've built your toolkit of ideas. Now let's look toward the future. So strategic innovation, entrepreneurship, creative thinking, um, leading change, and pitching and launching your ideas. The project for this program is very much like a dragon's den where you get to um, think of and launch an idea, product, or service for a panelist uh, or a panel of um, venture capitalists. So this is really a future-oriented program on entrepreneurship. By the way, if you were interested in taking this, uh, you there's no limitation, but I didn't want people to think it was a requirement in order to complete the mini MBA series because you just need cycle one and two at this point. So what are some of the people that are taking this course? Well, I'll give an example. This is Jody uh, from Ericsson. She said, I wanted to be able to sit at the table, understand numbers, what strategy means, what our vision is about. She wanted to be able to be comfortable in knowing a cross section of what goes on in her business. That's why she took this course and was able to walk away with a better confidence level of what goes on in management practice. Patrick, uh, he wanted to um, go on to an EMBA, but he wanted to kind of have a insurance policy, test the waters with the mini MBA to make sure that all the concepts that were taught were of interest to him. Because going on to an EMBA, which is a much longer term commitment, a higher price point commitment, he thought that he wanted a tester with the mini MBA program. So he just took EDC, the first part of the mini MBA, and then he did go on to an EMBA. While he didn't get academic credit for it, we supplied him with a letter of reference saying that he successfully completed the program, gained exposure to key concepts taught in leading MBAs, and uh, he did get into the program of his choice. You'll be in good company in that sense. Again, there's a really nice cross-section of companies, large and small. This is by no means a, a full representation, but it just shows that there's a lot of different uh, sectors and sizes of company uh, represented. And year after year, we have people sending, companies sending people uh, back to the program, which is a good sign. You'll also have a top-rated faculty team. We handpick them for one, the fact that they're very good with dialogue with managers and executives. So this is not going to be a 101 theory course. They're very charismatic and they all have some type of practical real world experience as well. Um, so people that have run organizations before and uh, can bring insights and uh, be, be good facilitators, but also know when to step back and let uh, let people in the audience speak and share their success stories because a lot of learning comes from that as well. 
So just a few uh, frequently asked questions, and then I'll open it up for other questions that you might have. And also Giovanna, I think, has taken some chat questions that might have come in. But um, some people ask if you need to take any type of testing to get into the mini MBA. A GMAT comes to mind because that's what's needed to get into an MBA or an EMBA or, well, an MBA program. But the answer is no. So we're really relying on you to say have five or more years or six or more years of experience in the world of work. You do not need to have any particular academic background to attend. Some people say, well, I didn't finish college. Can I go on to this program? Of course. The philosophy behind this is it's, in, it's open to all. However, we would want you to have some work experience. So somebody, let's say a 23-year-old who is just completing his or her undergraduate MBA and wants to go on, to, or an undergraduate degree, let's say a Bachelor of Commerce, and wants to go on to the mini MBA, would not be, uh, it would not be right for them. We want people to have some seasoned experience coming in, whether that be, as they say, a not-for-profit, a public-private company, it's, uh, it's just important to have some experience coming in. So uh, as mentioned, indeed, government not-for-profit managers will find value in the, the principles talked about in this program. And then in terms of the deadline, there's no deadline per se. We often find that um, oh, for, if, if you wanted to take, for example, EDC, and then you'll only take AMC two or three years later, that's fine. Recently, we had somebody complete the series. They started EDC in 2013 and uh, completed AMC in 2022. So it shows that you can extend the length if uh, you want. And then um, there is an academic credit, but you can get a letter of recommendation after, after completing this, which can be used for other academic pursuits. No deadline for enrollment, but we often see uh, the spots tend to fill up around, a, say, a month before the program start date. You do have a, a liberal opt-out policy. For example, if you, if you do sign up and pay for the program and then a schedule change comes up and you need to step away um, and, and drop the program, you can cancel up to two weeks before the start date and get a full refund. So that's an advantage to sign up. And if things change, there's, there's no problem. Um, in terms of homework, expect about three to six hours per week. Um, and then in terms of an exam, there are no exams or grades, but you will have learning by doing exercises and projects where the professors will be circulating around the either the virtual breakout rooms or the, the physical breakout rooms if you're in person to make sure that everybody's you know, understanding, participating, getting, getting to know what's being taught. So um, you, know, you will have a chance to have feedback from the professors, especially for some of the project work and exercises, but there won't be exams or a particular grade. We find people get very competitive in the uh, management and executive world. And so um, it's not, this isn't about grades, it's about learning, making mistakes, um, enjoying your pathway along along the the journey, and uh, hopefully, you know, learning new things to add value at the end. So with that, uh, I want to be mindful of time. I said we'd be under forty minutes. So far, so good. But just to answer any questions that you might have, um, and Giovanna, I don't know if some some have come in through chat. I just have one question that it is, does the six years plus years of experience need to be in a management or as a manager? They do not need to be in a management role. Um, you know, individual contributors are absolutely welcome on the program and you do not need to be a manager of others uh, or have six years of management experience to get in. So somebody that's just, we just want people to be in the world of work and, um, you know, seeing what the, uh, you know, what the strategies of the organization that they're in are and how they're being carried out. 
uh, working with others to get things done, et cetera. We want you to have just some background in that area, but not necessarily as a manager. Okay, we do have another question. It is, it is a requirement to complete both cycles. Do you have experience of attendance from outside of Canada with a different time zone? Yes, so very good questions. First of all, um, I'll answer the second one first. The, we, we have people regularly attending from various time zones in Canada or South America or even Europe um, coming onto the program. We're trying to do our best to have a variety of times where people can sign up. If I think of the program happening in April online, it's a nine to five Thursdays and Fridays. In the fall, we're offering a program that will be six to or five thirty to nine p.m. on Monday and Thursday evenings. So, for somebody who's say on the West Coast, um, there will be an online program that meets their needs better than say a nine to five where they're up at six in the morning. But we have had people, believe it or not. Um, even for our evening programs, attending uh, from Europe, et cetera. But we do try to have at least two, well, really three or more options to choose from. In person, which is full days, but in, uh, in Montreal, uh, Ottawa, or Toronto. Online for full days, Thursday and Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or online evenings only, from 5.30 to 9 p.m. So those are two, uh, those are some of the different options we have. And then I'm sorry, Giovanna, what was the uh, the first part of that question? Oh, just a second. The first part of the question. It is, it is a requirement to complete both cycles. Oh yeah, so, so on that, the, abs the answer is no. And we don't want this to be a required 20 day experience. That's why we wanna make it flexible and modular. So you could complete cycle one, you will get a certificate of completion for cycle one and it, it you can end there. 10 days of learning is already a lot of learning for people in various organizations. So there is no obligation to go on to complete the second. So uh, it's really up to you. Okay, we do have Actually, a lot of questions. Thank you for your participation. I really appreciate it. So we also having a lot of questions regarding the recorded sessions, if it's or, or online programs are recorded. So the answer is no. Um, and that might be surprising to you, but we really want this to be a live online, what we call experience. Cameras on. Um, you're going to be seeing the people, if you're online anyway, you're going to be seeing the people, um, your peers, you're going to be interacting with them, uh, you're going to be having the professor, um, hopefully laughing and, uh, and, and getting engagement with the group. So it'll be a live experience, just like it would be in the classroom. The other reason we don't record the sessions is we want this to be a place where you can take risks, you can be confident to ask questions that might even be, in your opinion, a, a silly question. Obviously, there are no silly or bad questions, but we want people to feel comfortable and not feel that they're being recorded what, during their learning journey. Also, this really is not at all like an edX or a Coursera or some other type of um, self-paced learning journey. This really is live online. We want this to be as close to an in-person class experience uh, as possible. We do have a very uh, specific question is that, do you recommend this course for health professionals who own their own business? You mentioned dentists has taken this program. Yes, and uh, and it is important. We've had first of all, we have people from uh, uh, from our um, our McGill University Health Center uh, that take it regularly. 
people in with the dental, let's say, a, a clinicians that are experts in their field, but not necessarily having management expertise. Uh, this is a fantastic course, honestly, because what it's doing is giving kind of a, a best of view of key management topics that would absolutely apply. As I mentioned, uh, there's been people from dental clinics, um, physicians, administrators in the health sector. So uh, yes, this would be applicable for you. And uh, some of our professors have worked specifically with uh, the healthcare and, and pharmaceutical industry along the way, um, have done custom programs with that, those sectors. So uh, yes, you, you will definitely uh, benefit from the course. I think maybe to finish it up, we have a last question that it says, if we don't require to complete the cycles, what is the advantage of completing all three? So it's really a question of the depth of knowledge you wanna go into. I would even add to that question, what's the benefit of all three mini MBAs and then why not go on to an EMBA? And the answer would be, indeed, if you have the time, um, an EMBA is gonna even give you more knowledge. The fact is, is that there's, there's so much that we could talk about in management and business. So I think for many people, they wanna download a, a snapshot of you know, skills and benchmarks and ideas but they only have 10 days. There's no way they can, they can juggle their work life, their home life, and their education life to do more than 10 days. And we want to say that's okay. Uh, take the 10 day, you know, the executive development course and stop there. But if you have the time and the budget to go on to take EDC and AMC, you're gaining exposure to even more concepts. It's that's the simple answer to it. You you're 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 getting a, a further depth of knowledge uh, by adding another 10 days to the experience. And then the same would go for IMT, uh, the third cycle. Um, that's just a, another six days. That's a shorter program, six days to, to look at things that we couldn't cover in the first two. Not to say that they're not important, but we just didn't have the bandwidth to cover it all in uh, the first two cycles. So things around innovation and entrepreneurship and pitching and launching new ideas um, is being reserved for IMT. So that's that would be the reason to go on is simply to have more exposure to more concepts. But I don't wanna belittle the fact that even if you only take EDC, you'll still get um, a wealth of important knowledge to level up in your understanding and future readiness. So with that, I do want to be mindful of time. I want to thank everybody for joining. I really appreciate it. And, you know, if you'd like, you can always reach out to us uh, and set up a, a, a time to chat. I'm glad to chat individually with anyone who would like to see, is this right for me? I have some specific questions. Il y avait quelques questions peut-être en français. Uh, je peux répondre à ces questions-là. So if you'd like, we can uh, set up a side uh, meeting uh, and chat either by video conference or by phone. I'd be glad to connect with you. So thanks again and uh, appreciate it and have a great day ahead and look forward hopefully to seeing you on a future program. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sorry, just uh, yes. Uh, if I need to speak yes, to you, I send the email to Mini MBA. That's the email I need to contact you to. Yeah, that would be Is perfect. That one, and that's that, okay. that's just to make sure that uh, there's always somebody monitoring that at all times. So if I'm at a meeting or what have you, uh, it'll it'll they'll make sure to get that to me. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your participation, and see you soon.